Hey there, welcome to my shop. My name's Bruce and this is my traditional woodworking workbench that I just built. It is made out of southern yellow pine with about $100, a little over $100 worth of materials in it. And I used J Bates plans. If you have not seen his video about making it, I'll leave a link to it below and I'll link to his plans because it's a great set. I purchased those and walked right through how he made it and everything worked pretty well. So let me show you how I made it. There's a lot of milling that happens in this video. I'm starting with that here. These are two by tens and you can find them pretty much anywhere. I'm just cutting them to the rough length from our workbench top pieces and then I'm ripping them in half. Then I glued them up in sections being careful not to have any knots showing on one of the sides. That will become the top side. Next. I mill up the pieces for the legs and get them glued together in the clamps. While the glue was drying on those, I turned my attention back to the sections for the top. I ended up doing the top in three sections so it would still fit through my planer. I don't have a jointer wide enough to use for those pieces, so I made a sled out of some melamine and then shimmed the section where it would not move and I secured it with some hot glue. Then I could pass it through the planer a few times to create one flat face. This was pretty difficult because they weighed so much. Each of these panels was over 50 pounds. I had to catch them and kind of lift them as they came out of this little planer so it would not snipe into the cutter head with the counterweight. After I got one flat face, I could remove it from the melamine panel, flip it over, and start making the other side flat and parallel. Each of the sections ended up being right at 4 inches thick. Next, I took the sections over to the jointer to get one square side so that I could pass them through the planer again and have a good joint for gluing them together. I cut them all to the final length and then started adding some dominoes. I marked out where to put the dominoes and then made the mortises. These would help me keep all of the pieces aligned when I was gluing them together and would make for a more even top. I didn't have anything wide enough to flatten all of these at this point so I wanted to keep them as flat as possible. Be sure to use some spare boards on the edges of your panel pieces. That way as you're putting considerable clamping pressure on your workpiece, it's not putting dents in it from the clamps. I guess that's one of the things about using pine. There was a little gap toward one end, so I just taped it off really quickly and added some epoxy in there. I used the joiner to square up the legs and get them all sized the same. And it was time for more milling and gluing, this time for the stretchers. My friend Brandon came over to help me flatten the top for this workbench. He brought over his number five hand plane and we worked on it for a couple hours together. If you've not done this, it's actually a pretty good time. If you have a friend near, invite them over to see if you can meet up, have a chat while you're working and get some stuff done. I'll leave a link to Brandon's channel below, so be sure to go check it out. Now it was time to break out the dado stack and start creating the tenons for the legs. I'm going with half lap joints, so I just cut halfway through the legs, then marked out the corresponding mortise on the workbench top and used the marking knife to score each of the mortises and then started clearing the material. It kind of goes without saying here, but you need to be very precise with your markings and using your marking knife. The more precise you are with your layout and your marking knife, the more precise you can make your chiseling be. At first I used a large Forstner bit to hog out a lot of the waste and then I broke out the chisels to take care of the rest. This was really tedious for me because I didn't have that much experience with chiseling things out by hand, but this sure gave me a lot of practice. Thank you. 
My son came out in the shop while I was finessing the fit, and I eventually got them all to fit pretty nicely. You can hear him ask me about why it's not perfect and this and that, and me telling him that I'm not perfect. I just kept doing test fits and then carving away bits that didn't quite fit until I got a nice fit. I marked out where the hole for the leg vise needed to be drilled and I did that at the drill press. It's way easier this way rather than waiting until it's all assembled. I'm going to be making another video about making and installing the leg vise so when that video is done you can check it in the video description below. Next, it was time to cut the half lap joints in the stretchers. Once you get it dialed in, it goes pretty fast. I actually had a little discrepancy between some of my legs slightly, so I used a lot of tape to mark which joints went with which, and it really helped me keep things straight in the end. Someone commented on my Instagram post that it looked like my bench had cut itself shaving with all of the tape pieces. If you want some behind the scenes shots and some progress of the different projects that I'm building as I go, that's the place for you to go. I'll link it below. Time to add the stretchers. I clamped everything together and pre-drilled and added screws. Then I would take off one section at a time, add glue, and add the screws back again. This worked quite well. It kept the stress out of what was potentially a very stressful glue up. By me only doing one section at a time, it made it very manageable. Then I just trimmed off the excess length of the stretchers for a very nice look. My wife helped me wrestle this beast to the floor and we put it in its final resting place. I needed to remove the top so I could glue the tenons into the top. This proved to be quite difficult, partly due to a good fit, which I'm happy for, and partly due to gravity. The method I was using previously was not working very well for me to try to hold it and hit. So I asked my wife to help out again and she hit down on the base as I held up on the top. We worked at it for a while, but eventually got it to come loose. I cut some wedges and after getting the tenons glued in, I hammered in the wedges. I put a generous amount of glue all over the tenons and down in the mortise and really didn't have that much squeeze out, so this accepted a lot. The good thing is that when I went to put the tenons back into the mortises, gravity was on my team that time. I just worked back and forth from one side to the other, working it down little by little until I finally got it to drop in place. Using a flush trim saw, I trimmed off the excess from the wedges and that way I was able to come back with my hand plane and finish it off. The tenons were just proud of the top, which was perfect because it left just enough for me to plane off and get it equal with the top of the workbench. There were a few gaps that the wedges didn't cover, so I mixed up some glue and sawdust and filled the gaps with it. I 
I decided to cap the screw holes off with dowel plugs, so I had to drill out the screw holes a little bit more and I added in some red oak dowel plugs that I cut off camera. This doesn't really add anything to it structurally because the screws were just fine, but I do like the way it turned out. It just added a nice touch to it visually. Then I came back and flush cut them and sanded them perfectly smooth. I broke all of the sharp edges with a little hand sanding and the first phase of this workbench was done. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I had a lot of hiccups along the way and just had a lot of hangups mentally about building this thing. Like I wanted it perfect. And when something would go wrong, then it wasn't perfect. But we all know that as you're building things, a lot of projects don't turn out perfect. But it turned out really good. I, I love it. It's super sturdy. The thing is heavy. I've actually already started on a tool wall that's going to go here behind it and this is going to be kind of like my new area that I work a lot in. So again, if you want plans to this workbench, they're not my plans. They are from Jay Bates. I will link to those below. They're the plans that I used and I'll link his video below of how he built this. Stay tuned because I'm going to be doing some other things as a part of this project. I'm going to add a leg vise to this side. You can already see the hole drilled in there. I'm going to drill some dog holes in here. I might add an end vise and just a lot of other things that I'm going to do to this bench. So for a while now, I've been posting behind the scenes stuff on this on my Instagram page, which is at BrewDaddy. You can see right here. Go over there and give me a follow. I post a lot of the stuff that I'm working on as I'm doing it and I would love to have you interact with me over there and if you've built a workbench I'd actually love to see some of the accessories and stuff that you put on yours so head over to Instagram is probably the best way to share with me and just tag me in one of your posts or send it to me in a message so thank you for watching if you're not already subscribed, I would encourage you to click that subscribe button and the bell notification beside it. That way, the next time I upload, when I add some more to this bench, you'll see it. Um, I don't have the videos done of those other things yet, but once I do, I'll put them here and here. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.